Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. Time for the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for Thursday, the 8th of September, 2022. Today we're going to look at Earl and its impacts on Bermuda and even some swells for the east coast of the U.S. Those are impacts. And, of course, K in the eastern Pacific, as well as a look ahead at what might be or might not be happening after these entities are gone. All right? All right. So let's get on with it. We'll start off at the National Hurricane Center homepage. Here is Earl. As of the 2 p.m. intermediate advisory, 105 mile per hour winds, and it is moving now to the north northeast. It'll be closing in on Bermuda in the coming hours. And then we have Danielle, which is done. Post tropical now, so that's it. The Book of Danielle is now closed, so to speak. And then we have 95L out here, definitely battling some shear and dry air conditions. What else is new, right? And then this system eventually might become 96L. We shall see. And then, of course, in the Pacific, we do have K over here just off the Baja there with the center of it. But it did spread some heavier rain showers up this way and some squally conditions. Our colleague uh, Brent has been down there, uh, and he says it wasn't too bad. Maybe some hurricane force gusts last night, perhaps, uh, but really nothing too bad down there from what Brent was telling us. So here's what it all looks like on our track map. Uh, let's zoom in over here to K real quick. Interesting how it goes up and then makes this abrupt U-turn. The high pressure out west just too strong for it, so it can't bump into that and just plow through it. It doesn't work that way with physics on our planet. I uh, Zoom in a little closer here. The center could cross right over the western part of the Baja. And by the way, kudos to the GFS because it was the farthest east and it looks like it's going to end up being correct with its track overall the last several days. I was watching that, and um, it looks like it's going to do a pretty good job here overall. No, it will not make it up to California in terms of any direct impacts, but some rain showers, maybe some heavier rain from time to time, and that is about it. Scooting over here towards the Atlantic side, let's zoom in, and you can see the closest approach that Earl will make with its core to Bermuda, if we can turn on our little distance calculator. Uh, there's Bermuda, and let's just say we go about right here. You can go anywhere along the track or outside of it, whatever you want, even how far it is from my house if I had a boat or a plane. Uh, anyway, there's the closest approach. Yeah, the core of it, maybe 76 miles from the, the actual you know center of where the highest winds are. The eye if it was to be exactly on this track, would be about 91 miles away. So it just depends on how you look at it. Uh, speaking of looking at it, this is what it looks like from one of our colleagues' houses in Bermuda. Kind of a dark sky there. Uh, he was sending us, his name is Howard, he was sending us video that we have posted on our Discord, and I'm going to throw those on Twitter a little later. So yeah, some gnarly looking skies there, and a little bit of wind kicking up. Not too bad, though. The worst of the conditions... Conditions, conditions should, there we go, I can speak, stay just off the, uh, the coast there of Bermuda. But one thing that this will do is it will send out swells all along towards the east coast here. And there is a high threat of rip currents for por uh, portions of the Outer Banks of North Carolina here over the next several days. So please keep that in mind. Um, and elsewhere along the east coast too, this weekend especially, those swells and rip currents could be very problematic. Uh, one of these up here, I think I've got, yeah, there it is, the key messages from Earl. Yeah, those swells definitely take that to heart, especially along the east coast of the U.S. I know a lot of people are still going to want to go down to the beach. Water temperatures are still in the low to mid-80s, so you got to be careful out there, all right? Please. All right, so satellite animation this afternoon. There's K over in the eastern Pacific, large area of moisture. And again, all of that will work its way up to southwest Arizona and southern California. Some areas could pick up an inch of rain. And as long as it doesn't come down too quickly, the flash flooding will hopefully be limited. And you certainly could use the rain out that way, no doubt about it. There's Earl doing its best to eventually become a Category 3, maybe a Category 4 as it gets farther north into the Atlantic up here. Kind of odd that we're, no, we're not seeing that down in the deep tropics. No Category 4s down here. They're all the way up here as of late in uh, the, the higher latitudes, these stronger hurricanes. It's a Category 2 now and expected to become a 4 again 
uh, as it passes Bermuda up here. A very unusual pattern these last several years of very few strong hurricanes down in the deep tropics. Why that is? Well, that's a story for another day. Here's a close-up of, uh, of Earl, sorry, getting my hurricanes mixed up. There's Bermuda, and uh, you can see it's got a pretty good little center there. The uh, bands of deeper thunderstorms wrapping in there. The eye is not perfectly clear, and so that's indicating to me that it is not strengthening rapidly, but the conditions are generally going to improve through this corridor right up here, and we should see Oral really take off as it gets to and passes the latitude of Bermuda several hours from now. Meanwhile, visible or true color as it is, animation, and just a remarkable set of products. Again, I have to give props to Dr. Levi Cowan. We've known the site for years, tropicaltidbits.com. I love this product, really nice to see. And the overall scientists that put these satellites in orbit. This is just a product here that uh, Dr. Cowan put together so we could visualize it. One of many sites out there, but I love it, so I like to brag about it. I, I like seeing it. Uh, there's the desert southwest, pretty remarkable to see these clouds from a tropical cyclone coming up there. Some of that easterly flow coming through a few unrelated showers coming into Southern California, the bulk of the moisture down here. There is the center of K, and K is going to cross right over that little spur, as I call it, of the Baja, and then it'll eventually, uh, it's going to track like this, then as we showed you, it's going to turn south again because it'll be just a low-level remnant circulation, and it'll be steered more by lower level flow and that's going to be a very strong high pressure area that'll build back over the western US and it'll keep K from coming north any more than it already is or has. Uh, we did want to show you this look out in the southwest right now there are heat advisories certainly but there are also flash flood watches in effect for the area uh, southern California western Arizona even up towards parts of the Colorado River area south and east of Las Vegas. So if you're out there, just keep this in mind, especially this weekend. A lot of people like to go hiking out there in this area. You got Joshua Tree, Tree National Park and other boating and slot canyons. And just it's just a wonderful area of the country, honestly. But if you get a lot of rain in a short period of time, it can turn into some pretty nasty conditions for you. So just please be careful out there if you don't mind, because if I don't have you watching my videos, we've talked about this, um, you know, there's not much reason for me to do this, right? It's not for my enjoyment. It's, well, I do enjoy what I do, but I enjoy it better if you are safe and sound. Now, let's look at this. I think this is interesting. That, uh, these are the sea surface temperature anomalies. That is the area that has already been carved out by Earl. This has been carved out to some extent by K, and that has been carved out by Danielle. So our tropical systems here do remove heat out of the tropics. They take it right out of the oceans, literally whipping the ocean up, taking that energy, converting it into clouds and showers and thunderstorms and then the eye wall, a very violent process. And it takes all that heat and releases it into the atmosphere through condensation. Condensation is a warming process. So it transfers it from the ocean, literally wicking it out of there whipping it into a frenzy. Remember uh, Family Guy, whip, whip cream, or cool whip? Uh, it, does. it whips it into a frenzy. I'm sorry, I got distracted there. Um, easy to do sometimes. And you get the overall process continuing of this big heat engine, ultimately taking the heat out. And these are just great examples, these areas of cooler anomalies now from our hurricanes as of late. And we can zoom in especially over here from what Danielle did. You know, that's a pretty good area out over the Atlantic where things were very, very warm lately. They have been cooled off just a little bit. And we'll see if this makes any difference in terms of the weird stability issues and the overall distortion of the pattern that this ridiculous warm water relative to average has potentially, and there's people looking at it and working on it, we don't know for sure, but the hurricane season has been kind of weird. I think we can all agree not a lot of activity coming off and developing and heading west, and that's a good thing, obviously. Instead, as I pointed out, the energy has been more in the northern latitudes. I mean, look at where Danielle was, for goodness sakes. And even Kay 
pretty far north up here. It's not down in the deep tropics, headed out due west. So just an interesting overall pattern that we have seen. So what's it going to be going forward? Well, this is the GFS. Uh, we're going to kind of look between the GFS and the Euro here. Uh, this is from the 12Z run today. Actually, it says 6Z. I don't know why it does that. Uh, maybe it's broken again. Let's go and refresh this. There we go. There's the 12Z. Now we're where we need to be. All right. Start over. All right. So here's the 12Z run at about 5,000 feet in the atmosphere. I don't know how that happened, but whatever. And uh, this is the vorticity signature that I like so much. There's Earl. This is 95L. This is that other disturbance I showed you. And that is what's left over of Danielle. All right. So this is the current situation. And yes, it still says 12Z for the initial. So I got it right. And we move this out into time. Uh, let's just go on out for the sake of argument uh, for the next week. All right. So 168 hours out. There we go right there. 168. Let's rewind it and then do it again. Go out to 168 and right there. So a couple things to note. All of our systems going up in here to the higher latitudes and they transition over to extra tropical features or post tropical. Then we can see we do develop more high, uh, higher pressures down here over the Atlantic. These height lines here indicate to me that yes the pressures do build. And then there's a few bumps in the pressure field down in the deep tropics, and maybe a slight one right there as well, but that's it. Nothing like that or even like that down in the deep tropics. So over the next week, this gets us out to September 15th, will we just have nothing in the tropics at all? No name storms just after the peak of the season or basically during the peak of the season? Maybe. I mean, I don't know the future for sure, but the GFS is certainly showing generally a blank map here in the tropics. Now let's just look at one more layer, see if we can figure out why, maybe a couple of layers, uh, not just one. Let's look at the relative humidity. That's kind of dry out there all through this region, but that's what the brown shows. The greens are your pockets of moisture, but it's not terribly so, and certainly a lot more moisture over here in the western parts of the Atlantic Basin. So that's really not a big inhibitor, it would seem. What about way up at the 200 millibar level, uh, the outflow level? There's a pretty good tut carved out right there, tropical upper tropospheric trough, T-U-T-T. -T. There's another sharp one right there. Um, but otherwise, fairly decent overall wind flow through here. Uh, the winds are fairly light, kind of easterly coming off of Africa. So I don't really know why the GFS is not showing much. Maybe it's not working the way it should. It's missing the boat, so to speak. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see in a week. You know, we're going to get there a week from today. Let's look. I, I know I will. That's what I do for my job, and we shall see. Uh, but, you know, it's not seemingly prohibitively, like, put it this way. See these colors right here? These are very strong winds in the upper levels. If we saw that, and I'll just draw in some yellow down here. If we saw just tremendous amounts of yellow cutting across the deep tropics like this, you know, or whatever, especially down here, then I can understand it. So no real glaring reasons why the GFS is pretty calm on the 15th of, of September. So let's compare it to the Euro. And the Euro, let's refresh this, and it should go out to 168. It does. Thank you very much. Um, so here we are at the initial. Again, this is 12Z today. And the same area, 850 millibars of the atmosphere. And let's put this out a week into time. This is every 24 hours, I do believe. Earl goes past Bermuda. There are our systems, 95L, might be 96 eventually, we'll see. Uh, and then on to day three, four, five, six, seven. So a little bit different on the Euro versus what we see on the GFS. Fairly amplified tropical wave. Uh, this would certainly, if it was just like that a week from now, probably be tagged as an invest and a high probability of development. Same similar type of pressure pattern to the north. So not much difference. You don't get the same, I can't show you the 200 millibar on here, unfortunately. Uh, let's do look at the height anomaly, though, what the, what the thickness of the atmosphere is. And that's a, I mean, there's a little bit of a weakness there. But over the, otherwise, you know, it's a fairly favorable steering pattern to get these systems to come across. 
there's just not much out there. So the next week between now and 168 hours from now is going to be interesting to see. Are we just going to slow things down again, or is the GFS just kind of, like I said, not seeing climatology? Because climatologically speaking, we should be very active going forward. And the euro is hinting at that, at that just a little bit. So stay tuned, as they say. I don't know how the story will end. I guess we will find out together. All right? All right, that is about it from me for today. Have a great rest of your Thursday. As always, thanks for tuning in to the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. Don't forget, each morning I do produce the What's Up segment. So if you're watching new on YouTube or you've been watching for just a little while now, new this year, subscribe to the channel if you don't mind. It helps. And, of course, share the video with your friends, family, and colleagues. And hit that thumbs up. Uh, and if you don't like it, that's fine, too. You can hit the thumbs down, and it's not going to hurt my feelings. It'll be okay. The algorithms will probably not even notice because I'm not sitting on 10 million subscribers. But whatever. I do appreciate you. It matters very much to me that you watch from your device of choice. And uh, it's awesome. So thanks again. All right. That's it. Let me get this online for you. Trying to always figure out how to end these things, and sometimes it's not easy. So I'll just end it. Have a good rest of your Thursday. I'm Mark Suttoth for Hurricane Track. I'll be back with more tomorrow morning.